Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video I want to talk a little bit about cheese heroes. And by that I mean heroes that can most likely solo win the game easily. This uh, category there will be heroes like Meepo, Batrider, uh, Broodmother, Alchemist, stuff like that. That usually if they either get uncontested or they simply have a free game because they're not uh, they're not countered by any enemy hero. If you like this type of content, go to GamersClass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. So, I believe this is the one of the easiest ways to win MMR, especially in lower brackets, even at higher MMR. I've seen people that have like zero versatility only play brute and they're like top 300, top 400, and they can first pick it. Obviously, you know, you can do it also at lower MMR. If this guy can do it at higher MMR, I'm sure at lower MMR people won't even know how to uh, counter it, especially. So, because of that, it's going to be a really, really easy game for you, most likely. So, heroes such as Alchemist, Brute, Meepo, Tinker sometimes, yeah, types of heroes like that can easily win MMR. Batrider also, simply because if the enemy carries some immobile hero that has no dispel, no escape, you can just ruin his game and that most likely will give up in lower MMR, that's what I believe. So, these heroes have two purposes. In this game, I had like a first pick anti-mate jungle enigma, sort of. I mean, he wanted to go jungle, but uh, I guess he decided to go play position 5 afterwards. Um, obviously, enemies' picks are decent, right? They have a TB, they have a, something like TA, and we can't really contest them. So in my choice, obviously, I pick Brute Mother, last pick mid. Because of two things. My hero isn't really contested, which is exactly what I said before, first thing. Uh, this guy doesn't do anything to me, Slaughter. Obviously, later in the game, he can scout me trees and stuff like that with corrosive haze, but he doesn't mess with my spiders at all. So, I don't really care about Slaughter, to be honest. Rubik is the same. This doesn't really influence, this doesn't really counter me. He spells Lion exactly the same, and TB has no AoE. Even though TB is actually pretty good against Brute because he has a lot of armor and I don't do enough damage with spiders, but. Uh, besides that, you know, Tia was last pick with me. Tia is actually decent against Brute. But I knew that no matter what would happen in the game, I would have a decent game. Simply because four of the enemy heroes don't really do anything to me. So because of that, I'm able to pick this hero. And I'm actually able to make space for Antimish to come back. Obviously, I still win the game uh, because of my hero. But if the game would go even worse, you know, and even longer and stuff like that, my teammates are going to be able to come back simply because the opponents are going to have to deal with me first. Same as like a Batrider, right? Or any other hero that I mentioned before, Alchemist. They would have to ward their jungle, evade their jungle, gank you, stuff like that. Same as with Meepo. Ward your jungle, gank you, buy items to counter you, such as Yule Scepter, dispel your net. Same as Batrider, dispel the Q, Manta, BKB, you know, and... Meanwhile, your teammates can build whatever they want, do whatever they want, and actually have a great game. So that's, that would be the second reason. As you can see, my teammate isn't really doing that great, obviously. I mean, he's losing the lane. Even though Edigma is probably denying every single range creep, he's still behind. Yeah, Slider is pretty good against the Antimage, but still, you know. So that would be the second thing, that enemy heroes are going to have to deal with you first, before they deal with my Antimage in this game. So, I'm 1-0 right now. I killed the A once, I believe. Yep. And if you skip ahead a bit, as you can see, I'm still owning. I'm 3-0 right now. Kill the A again. Meanwhile, my anti-mage is trying to fight for some... Actually, no, he's bottom, but he's watching top. Instead of... Yeah, whatever. So, this is my anti-mage. While I kill their enemy mid laner, I'm also farming. My anti-mage also hit the creeps. And my teammates are just... Uh, fighting the rest. They're going to get a slaughter kill. So look at my anti right now. Wh what is he doing? Where are the opponents? They're in their side of the map because they can walk past this mid lane. Because I will kill them. Simple as that. anti is going to come back a bit. 
as you can see, just past Slaughter. And with his lane, 0 1, didn't really have that much, has a 30 minute battlefield. So it's really, really good. The enemies are simply forced to deal with me first. Same as if I were playing a Meep or something like that. They're simply going to deal with me first and then my teammates. And because of that, my teammates are going to have a great game. So even if my hero doesn't solo win the game, like I sort of did this game, uh, I'm still going to have a pretty decent game because of the nature of the hero. I can still jungle the opponents even if they change me. I can just walk through trees and walls and stuff like that. They can't really do that. Meanwhile, my other heroes are simply free. Okay, exactly right now. I'm diving their tier three, tier three. 30 minutes in. I'm killing their mid laner. I'm forcing this guy's ladder TP. Lion is going back to base to heal. This guy's bottom. Doesn't really matter. So, yeah. I'm making a lot of space for this Sam. Yeah. He actually got a kill on Rupi. <laughs> because of, you know, this guy dying. This guy dying, TP can't really help, slaughter TP there. So uh, this is exactly what I want you to see. It's a lot, a lot of space that I'm making for this guy, indirectly, right? I mean, not indirectly, I'm actually making space because I'm also... Uh, but I'm also keeping my farm up. As you can see, I'm 9,000 gold. Next one, TA is 6.7. So I'm like 2.3 ahead of him, almost. So, yeah, this is... If you could sort of... Uh, Repeat, I mean not repeat, just do this at lower MMR or anything. I'm sure you would gain the MMR, a lot of MMR for sure. So with heroes such as Alchemist, which is pretty similar to Brute, simply because you get ahead of your opponent. This is sort of the common, uh, the common, you know, term with all of these heroes that I mentioned before. You simply get ahead of them. And if you manage to uh, stay ahead of them, or even just to make the opponents deal with you, your teammates are going to have a great game. And it's simple as that. Even though my teammates just died to slaughter, we know, blink, you know. Uh, we pretend we didn't see that. And then he died again. And then he's just going to farm. And then he died again. I won four, who knows. Yeah. This is the moment where I, I also died, I believe. I was like 8-0, and then I died once, and then sort of, you know, game collapsed a little bit. So this is the second yeah, as you can see, I was owning so hard, but then this guy died a lot. So this is the second part of the game. Obviously, if you can just win the game simply because you pick the tree's hero, that is great. But the second part of the game would be when actually the other hero is going to sort of come back into the game. Even though he was 1-1, right? And after he killed Rubik, he died three times afterward. And this guy is still as farmed as Terror, right? Because of all the space that I was able to make for him. So he died three times more. And he's still having actually a decent game. 22 minute Manta. So after you sort of die or whatever. Lose your advantage because they took Rosh. So we didn't really want to go on them. As you can see he had ages. We didn't really want to go on them. Um, yeah. Watching AM almost die again. <laughs> this is sort of the moment you need to chill a bit. As you can see, I'm almost losing my gold advantage. So this is where you have to wait for your power spike. Which is my BKB. Which it's exactly what I just got right here. I just got my BKB. So now I can actually fight. Even though they have BKB uh, even though they have Aegis or anything, I can still go fight because I have the BKB. Only died because you know they pressed every single spell on me, every single disable, so my teammate is his farming, can't really help me. Enigma doesn't really do anything without Black Hole. As you can see, even Enigma got ultra farm. More farm than their own laner, which was full free farm. It's just because I was able to, you know, bully them around. This guy actually clicked on him later a bit in the game. He almost had a link and I was all surprised with this farm. Even though I did it, you know, I indirectly gave him, gave him all this farm. Simply because I was able to invade the jungle and stuff like that, play here. As you can see, my webs are here. I even played here a bit. So they're not able to farm a lot. So in other cases, other heroes, obviously, as I mentioned before, for example, if you die once with Meepo, or, you know, once or twice, whatever, you lose your advantage. Your next power-up, you should just wait for the next power-up, power spike, which usually is going to be a hex, which allows you to kill the heroes easily, you know, without any sort of 
uh, possibility to press Manta, BKB, stuff like that, Dual Scepter, is simply because, you know, you hex them. So, on Batrider would be sort of like a BKB or something like that. So, because of that, you're most likely going to win these type of games. With the trees here, obviously. I believe, as I said before, if you could uh, replicate this at lower MMR, I'm 100% sure you're going to gain MMR. And even game knowledge. It's simply because you need to be aware always what is going to happen and what is happening in the game. For example, look at me in this game. I, I'm 8 1 2. Obviously, I only died once. So I only sort of, let's say, lost my focus or whatever. I didn't 100% focus on the game. Even though I was 100% focused on the game. I have no excuses not to watch my screen, right? <laughs> to see what is happening. Because I'm always alive. So I'm always playing. If I were to play something like, I don't know, Storm or whatever. Or let's say Tiny. I'm a ganker. Same. You know, uh, I'm a Tiny. I'm obviously going to die a bit more. And then, you know, I might get bored or whatever. I might get disconnected a bit from the game. But since I'm playing a hero like Brood and I don't die. Yet, same as I would consider like a Meepo or whatever else I mentioned. Or any other hero that is sort of cheese. You're not dying in the game, most likely. So you have to play a lot more careful. And a lot more, you know, pay a lot more attention to the game. And because of this, I also think you can improve a lot more. It's because you have a lot more stuff to focus on. If you're playing Meepo, oh, Shaker has a blink and then he... Okay, what do I do? Oh, I need to go on Shaker before he goes on me with blink. What do I need to do that to go and trigger? Oh, I need to buy smoke. So, you know, he doesn't see where I am. And then I blink on him with the hex that I mentioned before. Okay, that's what I have to do. So you simply get better because there are a lot more uh, variables in the game. You get what I mean? There's a lot more things to think about. And a lot more stuff to do. So because of that, you know, you're simply going to improve more. You're also sort of playing more Dota because, as I mentioned before, you're not high. So, yeah. I actually think you can gain at least like a thousand MMR just by spamming Brood or Meep or stuff like that. So, I'll try to do this, guys, and let me know what you think about it. Until next time, I've been at the queue. Have a nice day.